Hello class, this is Dr. Branch. I'm going to give you a lecture today about abortion procedures. I want to forewarn you, we are going to describe some very brutal and violent acts. Abortion itself is brutal, and I want my students to understand that it is so. Sometimes I've had students that were upset at the descriptions of these procedures. In many ways, I'm glad you are upset. It shows that the conscience is still working. The reason I go through these procedures is so that we can understand very clearly what it is we are discussing when we enter into moral debate about abortion. Should abortion be morally permissible, yes or no? Well, it's helpful to know exactly what happens in an abortion. So that's my goal here. I want to illustrate a few or introduce you to a few key thoughts and ideas as we work through this lecture. I want to skip past this part here at the beginning, except to emphasize two things. The most common form of abortion in the United States is in the category of elective abortion. That means perhaps 93% of all abortions are in the United States are merely for convenience. So there's frequently discussion about the morality of abortion in the cases of hard cases, such as rape, incest, severe fetal deformity, uh, such as an anencephalic child. If we set aside all the hard cases at the high end, you're talking about 7% of all abortions in the United States. The vast majority, 93%, are merely done for the mere convenience. The child is in the way and is eliminated. So I want to clarify for you two big categories within that. Now that we've sort of talked about the reasons why people get abortion, elective versus the others, there's two big categories. I call it pharmaceutical versus surgical abortions. Pharmaceutical abortion refers to someone taking a drug in order to end the abortion. These are frequently called medical abortions, but I have found that's confusing to my students because for many of my students, the term medical encompasses a great many things. So I use the term pharmaceutical to indicate that a drug is given to end the, the, uh, end the baby's life. This is called a pharmaceutical abortion. Surgical abortions occur when a very specific procedure occurs, an intrusion is made into the woman's body via a surgical procedure. So let's talk about pharmaceutical abortions, again, also known as medical abortions. You will see this term all over the internet. So when someone talks about a medical abortion, they're referring to taking a drug. I prefer the term pharmaceutical. I think it's easier for my students to understand. So usually what we are talking about is a drug that goes under the brand name of Mifeprex. Its technical name is RU486, and it was specifically designed to end a pregnancy. And so what happens is in the woman's body, the hormone progesterone is essential for establishing and maintaining a pregnancy. Mifepristone is an antiprogestin, meaning that its main action is to block the chemical receptor sites in the uterus normally used by progesterone. And by doing so, it ends the pregnancy and the baby dies. It can be used up to 10 weeks gestation. Originally, it was legal through seven weeks. The Obama administration extended it to 10 weeks. So it can be used 10 weeks gestation. It's basically a three-step process. On one day, the lady takes the Mifeprex. 24 to 48 hours after taking Mifeprex, she takes uh, misoprostol. This drug triggers uterine contractions to expel the dead baby. So the mifeprex causes the progestin to stop doing its job inside the mother's womb and basically the baby dies. And then she takes the second drug, misoprostol, to have the miscarriage itself. And about 7 to 14 days after taking mifeprex, she follows up with the health care provider. So what I want you to see is this is not a simple one-step process. There's three steps that go with it. And I want you to keep something very, very clear. This is not a morning after pill. Mifeprex RU46 is not a morning after pill. The abortion pill and the morning after pill are two different things. The morning after pill refers to emergency contraception. There is debate about whether emergency contraception, such as Plan B, has an abortifacient effect. But Mifeprex is not the morning after pill. Mifeprex is a not a contraceptive at any, any level, has no contraceptive purposes, 
It is specifically designed to kill a baby. So keep that straight. Mifeprex, the abortion pill, and the morning after pill are two different things. So there's some other types of pharmaceutical abortions, but this is the one you need with which you should be most familiar. Now we're going to talk about surgical abortions, and this is where it gets brutal. So first of all, let's talk about manual aspiration. I'm going to show you a small device here. This is a exactly what it claims to be, a manual aspiration. A, a midwife or a nurse practitioner or a physician, depending on what country you're in, takes a, surgical, a device that looks something like this, a, a manual pump. That's what's called manual aspiration. You might think of it as manual suction. This is used manually to suck out a very early uh, human life. So the idea is that this method of abortion can be used by midwives in sub-Saharan countries or third world countries. That's why a lot of folks like it. Other people here in the United States are arguing that it could be used here in the United States by midwives, nurses, or nurse practitioners to save the cost of using a physician for a later term abortion, but that's still in the, the working stages of the pro-abortion crowd right now. So it's not very frequent here in the United States. You may, in a missions environment, encounter it on the third world mission field more frequently. But when most people think about a, an abortion in the United States, the most common type of abortion in the United States is called suction curatage, vacuum curatage. If you say suction abortion, that's what most people call it. So in the United States context, when people think of an abortion, this is what they have in mind. And so the main process, a vacuum device tears a baby apart and sucks it into a jar. It is a horribly violent act. It's the most common type of abortion. I'm going to talk about this number. This number, 80%, is high. That is old data. I have it corrected on another slide. The developing baby is removed by a suction device that is inserted into the uterus. This is about 28 times stronger than the vacuum you would use to clean out your car or to vacuum the carpet in your home. Suction curatage. And they can be done usually up through 12 weeks. This is first trimester or 13 weeks, whatever. However you want to define the first trimester. These are first trimester abortions. They are not late term abortions. So this is very violent, but we're showing you what happens. This is from a right to life. The woman's cervix is dilated. The suction piece is placed into the womb. The baby is sucked out. A curette is then used to make sure that all the pieces of the baby are removed and the remains of the baby go into a jar. And yes, you can see arms and legs and torso and other small pieces of torso and other things in the jar. It is horribly violent. So a small human life is sucked to pieces. Just so we have some perspective, this is what a human life looks like at 12 weeks. You can see the ears, the eyes, and the fingers and the nose. This is what we're discussing here. So let's clarify the abortion data. On the previous slide it said 80%. That's old data. So here's what you need to know. In the United States in 2016, and this is the most recent data from the CDC published just in November 2019. They're always lagging behind a few years in getting their data out, but here it is. In 2016, about 91% of abortions in the United States were first trimester abortions. That means they were early abortions. Of those, almost 30% were using the abortion pill, and the other 60, another 60% 60 or so were surgical abortions in the first trimester. And I know there's some other room there, but this is basically how the data works out. So what you see is a larger percentage of women today are using the abortion pill and it's hard to get a real uh, definite data on abortion in the United States. I'm using the CDC data, the Allen Guttmacher Institute, which is associated with Planned Parenthood, and they are a pro-abortion group, actually gives better data, as, as hard as it may seem, but they do. They get their data directly from the abortion providers, and the CDC is gathering it from the states. So the Guttmacher Institute f uh, comes in higher on the number of abortions year in and year out. But for the sake of discussion today, I've used the CDC data. What you need to know is this. Here's the takeaway for you as a student. Suction abortion is still the most common form of abortion in the United States as of the year 2020, but many women are now using the abortion pill, and thus the number of suction abortions has decreased. 
So more women are using the pill. That 80% number that you saw earlier, that's old data from a couple of decades ago. So this is more up to date. And what you need to remember is more women are using, uh, excuse me, more women are using the abortion pill and fewer women are using suction abortion. I'm not going to talk about dilation and curatage. This is basically using a curette to scrape out the baby. The World Health Organization says this method is obsolete. It still occurs on occasion, but very rarely. Saline injection. So this is rarely done in the United States anymore. It is a very rare, it's a, a later term of abortion, typically a second semester abortion. It used to be more common in years past, but it's very rare today. You can read my notes about how infrequently it occurs in the United States. But it is a hard, hard thing. And in a saline injection abortion, a needle is inserted into the water sac surrounding the baby. Some fluid is removed and then replaced by a concentrated salt solution. The baby is burned and poisoned to death. You see what happens here. And then the mother gives birth a couple of days later to a dead, or excuse me, a couple of days, within 24 hours of a dead baby. This is Gianna Jessen. Uh, she actually survived a saline injection abortion. Her mom was seven and a half months pregnant and she's alive today. And I know this is hard, but this is what a baby looks like after a saline injection abortion. I should have warned you before this slide, but so that you understand what's happening. This is a baby that's been burned to death via saline injection abortion. Hysterotomy, this is another very rare method used today for abortion. It's used for some second trimester abortions and perhaps some third trimester abortions. Uh, trimester abortions. I'm having a hard time getting precise data on how frequently hysterotomy is used. It's basically like a C-section, but instead the purpose is to kill the baby. And again, it's not clear to me how frequently this happens. Apparently it is infrequently. Dilation and evacuation is the name for a suction curatage when performed after 12 weeks of pregnancy. It's the most common during a second trimester pregnancy, but remember the vast majority of abortions in the United States are done in the first trimester. It's similar to a dilation and uh, curatage, or suction dilation and curatage, but with much larger instruments. And this is violent. Well, you see the abortionist reaching in here, cutting off pieces of the baby, snipping off an arm, pulling them out piece by piece. And uh, then a suction device is also used at the very end to make sure all the parts are gotten out. This is a, a hard act, but this is what it is. Partial birth abortion is now illegal in the United States. It is not clear to me if this is used anywhere else in the world right now. And I know you want to know, I just don't know. But it is now illegal in the United States. But here's how it happened. It was also known as dilation and extraction. And what happened was the abortionist would intentionally turn a very late term pregnancy, eight and nine months, turn the baby around breech in, inside the mother deliver the, the torso and the feet, but leave the, the head inside the, the birth canal. And this is violent, but this is what they would do. And take a pair of scissors, puncture the back of the baby's skull, and then suck the brain out and deliver a bad ba dead baby. This is infanticide. It's killing a small child. It is now illegal in the United States. Uh, thank God for that. And this is what it looks like, just so you'll know. I know it's it's violent, but here's what it, what was done in this act, which is now illegal in the United States. You see the baby's head being perforated right there. So he'll, who feels pain in an abortion? I'm going to encourage you to read my notes on this topic because for time's sake, I want to scoot on to the end and let me give you a little bit more data about abortion data and then I want to talk about Planned Parenthood. So there's lots of stuff in the notes. What I want you to remember for the exam is the information about suction abortion and then the information about the abortion pill. Now, let's talk about who's getting an abortion. Uh, I already talked about the percentage of how, what percentage of them are done before uh, 13 weeks, which is the first trimester. There's all sorts of guesses about how many abortions since 19 73 with Roe v. Wade, but frankly over 60 million abortions in the United States. And here's what you need to know as a student. One of the reasons that we have an immigration crisis in our country 
is because these are 60 million taxpayers and potential workers that have been aborted. And if it were not for immigration, the population of the United States would have declined in the last 45 to 50 years because of abortion. And because this many millions of people have been killed, that means there's a glut of jo uh, workers are needed. And the workers simply aren't there because these children have been killed. So here's what you need to know and uh, what I want you to remember. Cohab who's getting an abortion? First of all, cohabitation is related to a higher abortion rate. That should make sense to you. A couple live together. Their goal is not really to have children. They want to have sex, usually, and so the baby gets in the way. Minorities are overrepresented. Particular Hispanics and black, uh, African Americans, blacks, are overrepresented. So what you need to understand is African Americans make up 12 to 13 percent of the population in the United States. Perhaps any given year, 30%, perhaps a bit higher of the abortions. So what you see is they're overrepresented. That said, the most common person to have an abortion is still young and white. So the data is not good for any ethnic group. All of us share in the pain and grief of abortion, but minorities are overrepresented in abortion data. And also poor women are overrepresented in abortion data. So here's what you need to remember, three talking points. People who live together abort more frequently. Minorities are overrepresented in the data. The most common person to get an abortion is still a young white woman somewhere in her 20s. But then also poor women abort at a higher rate. So that's who's getting an abortion. Let me say a few things about abortion providers and Planned Parenthood and we'll conclude this little video. Planned Parenthood is the largest abortion provider in the United States. They get over $500 million of tax money every year, which I find morally offensive to the highest degree. And several years ago, a group of young abortion uh, opponents, very, and this is a quote from Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood. I have the book here on my shelf right over my right shoulder right there. It's called Woman in the New Race. And she said, the most merciful thing a large family does to one of its infant members is kill it. Well, they've certainly succeeded at that. And you need to know that it's actually a sort of a decentralized organization, 85 different affiliates around the United States, 82 different offices around the nation. Not all of those offices do an abortion, but Planned Parenthood is the largest abortion provider. Started getting federal money in 1970, one more reason not to like Richard Nixon as president. And in 2012, they have performed over 327,000 abortions. So the question is, I mentioned these very bright and intrepid young pro-life activists who caught Deborah Nucatola on video uh, discussing dismembering babies and selling them for profit. And she said this, we've been very good at getting a heart, lung, liver, because you know, we know that's what I, I'm not gonna crush that part. I'm basically gonna crush below, I'm gonna crush above, and I'm gonna see if I can get all of it intact. And when she said these things, she said all these things, eating this, I don't know how much her $25 salad and drinking some red wine at lunch at some Tony restaurant out in California. This is what you have with a seared conscience that you discuss dismembering babies and selling their parts over a glass of red wine at a nice lunch. So what is an abortion? An abortion is a violent act. I realize these are painful things to discuss, but I did want you to understand how very violent this act is and understand the very brutality of it so that you might be more informed as you make a moral decision about it.